it's been a while since I get really excited about these things because a lot of times they just look like the same old thing over and over again. But it, oh! All right, today we got a new battery from VoltGo. Let's open it up. All right, guys, and there's the battery. This is a really neat, very ruggedized battery. There's a, like a ton of mounting options uh, where you could mount these brackets all over. There's on the corners, on the bottom, on both sides. So this is their 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour model. They come in 24 volt and they also come in a 48 volt. So it's IP65 rated, it has Bluetooth, and it's heated. It has a max charging current of 150 amps and a max discharging current of 150 amps. And it looks like it has these COM ports right here that are uh, waterproof. It's got a little seal inside there. It feels like a little uh, silicone seal. So there's a COM one. Uh, it looks like it's RS-485 and also has a CAN bus. And the same thing for this COM two. Look, there's even a mounting point right here. So just a super neat case here. This looks very rugged. So let's try this on off switch here. So it's actually, it shows us 25, 50, 75, and 100% state of charge. And it's actually at 100% state of charge. Uh, and it's showing us a light here for run. I guess that means everything's ready to go. There's an alarm light here that, it, that is not on. So let's check the voltages at the terminals. And we're seeing 13.3 volts. All right, so let's weigh this guy. So we came in at 52.8 pounds. And let's see if we can download the app. I think it's this VoltGo Bluetooth. And then there's a Bluetooth ID marked on the side of the battery. It's a ZT12V200AH0084, which is this one right here. And there we go. It found the battery and connected just fine. So we're showing our cell voltages here, our temperatures here. This app works really nice. It's a very good looking app. They did a really good job apparently on this thing because it's working really well. It connected perfectly fine. There's nothing shady about it at all. It has a settings here. We can change the ID. The CAN protocol is set to Victron I think here. So I guess it can communicate with Victron gear. There's nothing to select on the RS-485 protocol, so that's probably something for future. And this thing is showing us at 90% stated charge. So let's hook a charger up to it, and we'll go ahead and charge it up to 100%. So we're showing 43.9 amps going in, and it's saying that we are charging. So we'll just let that keep going. And while this is charging, they also sent us an empty case. <laughs> So this one has no cells in it. It's just the, the case of the completed battery. Uh, let's go ahead and just pop it open and see what it looks like on the inside. And we are going to open this one as well. I wanna be able to see the construction of the actual cells and everything, but uh, we'll get to that later on. All right, so there we go. We can lift up. And I believe these are stainless screws. We got a magnet here, and indeed it is stainless. It's not sticking to the magnet. Awesome. So this thing is really meant to be used near water. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this case. The mold, this thing is, it's, it's definitely like a fiber enforced, really thick plastic. I mean, this is not flimsy at all. It's got a lot of weight to it. It's very structurally sound. And uh, there's the inside. Yeah, it's a very, very strong case indeed. And these little mounting brackets here, these are metal. Some kind of cast. I think it's aluminum maybe. Yeah. I think these are cast aluminum. Looks like these could be mounted here, 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 and like I said earlier, here. 
Oh, I think I see what this is. This plate is for. This plate right here, you can take it off, and I think it joins multiple batteries together. So if you had two of these, and you want them to be fixed together, I think you can take this and mount it here, and then it'll join to the other battery. We can try that. Okay, and on the lid, it does have a thick rubber seal that goes all the way around. Let's pull it out and see. Yeah, it's a very thick rubber seal and it mates with this lip right here that presses up into it. We're definitely going to check the IP65 rating. Yeah, so I'm totally digging this thing. It's a very nice battery. It's been a while since I get really excited about these things because a lot of times they just look like the same old thing over and over again. But it, oh, well, I wonder how that IP65 rating is going to work out. All right, guys, yes, I did that on purpose because I wanted to see if, if this thing would leak. Uh, after I pulled it out of the pool, I dried it off, but of course there's water in every little nook and cranny. And I've just been going over with this little duster here and kind of blowing the water off on the outside without trying to use too much force because I don't want to force any water in past any seals. So I've literally just been going very softly and I think I got most of the water out of everything but uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just let it set and dry for a little while and then we'll open it up and see if any water got on the inside if water got on the inside I, I would expect it to stay in there for a while I'll be back in a little bit and we'll open this thing up and see if there's any water all right you guys so I think this thing is set for long enough it should be fairly dry on the outside. Well, let's open it up. All right, the moment of truth. Is there water in here? I don't see any water. Let's inspect. It's completely dry. That is excellent. It's especially excellent because I'm the one that opened it first. So I was able to put it back together and get it to seal properly again. <laughs> I was a little concerned about that, to be honest with you. All right, inspect the lid here. I don't see anything wet. Nothing around the ports here. Now it's completely dry. And even these COM ports, they're, they're like potted. They're full of epoxy, so there's no way anything's going to get through there. You know, I was uh, kind of worried about, you know, what if you did have this mounted on your boat or something and these were loose? That would let water in, but it actually will only get into here because if you look on the... If you look on the back side, it's fully clogged up with epoxy. But uh, yeah, there's nothing, there's no moisture. Zero. Of course, I didn't submerge it or anything like that, but I don't think, I think I, IP65 is, you know, it can handle some splashing, some spraying. I don't think you're supposed to be able to submerge it. Maybe a little bit of submersion. Let's look, let's look it up. Okay, it's uh, IP65 international standard that indicates that an electrical enclosure is dust tight and watertight against light pressure water spray. So we might might have actually, you know, dunking it in the pool, even though it floats for the most part. We probably went a little beyond IP65. All right, so that's fantastic. And this guy is actually charged, or the charger stopped. Let's take a look at the app, and it says 100% charge. It says protect, so maybe uh, one cell has peaked up. Let's go to detail here. So they're actually all at 3.5. Yeah, so basically it's cut off charging because it doesn't want any more. It doesn't want any more charge. 
and I think that when we start to discharge, that's going to go away. All right, so, so far everything's good. So let's hook this thing up and do a capacity test. All right, guys, so we've got the battery hooked up to my shunt. Uh, we're gonna record a time lapse of the data from the shunt. We got the inverter hooked up and the AC hooked up as the load to the inverter. So let's go ahead and turn on the inverter. There we go. And the AC, let's start off on low. So we're only pulling 20 watts right now. I think we need to wait for the compressor to kick in. All right, there we go. The compressor has completely kicked on. We're pulling over 500 watts. And our app has moved from protect mode to discharging, so that was all good. It's showing that we're discharging 31.5 amps. And our shunt's showing a little bit different. Well, actually, it's... Okay, so the AC is going down a little bit, so we're showing 27.8 and this is showing 27.8 as well. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, there we go. We're pulling like 50 some odd amps, um, almost 700 watts. I'm gonna let it uh, discharge at that and we'll come back when it's complete. All right, guys, so we are down to 2% on the capacity test. We pulled 196.45 amp hours, 2,555 watt hours. So far, looking great. On the app showing the cell voltages, they all look fantastic still. They're all at 3.15, 3.145, 3.149. Three point one four nine. Well, now it's five one. Uh, so the cell voltages are actually still up pretty well. All right, we're down to one percent. One hundred ninety-eight point sixteen amp hours, and the cell voltages are still looking fantastic. All above three point one still. We're about to hit full capacity. And there it is 200 amp hours 2600 watt hours and of course we're just gonna let that keep going to see where we end up at all right so the inverter is complaining now and I just refreshed the app and our cells are at 2.7 there's one at 2.586 2.7, 2.6. Our lowest cell is at 2.53. All right, so I'll go ahead and turn off the load. All right. And so we ended up at 210.35 amp hours, 2,722 watt hours. Completely passed our capacity test with flying colors. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I like to hose my batteries down and get them nice and clean before I open them up for surgery. All right, that should do it. And just so we can see that it's nice and watered down. And just like I did on that empty case, I'm just going through and... Just 
blowing the water out of the cracks and crevices. All right, so I'm gonna let that set and kind of air dry a little bit and then we'll crack it open and see what's on the inside. All right, guys, the time has come. We're gonna open this thing up. I believe that all the water is gone. Yeah, I'm not seeing any water splashing out anywhere. All right, everything's loosened up. So let's open it up. Oh, wow. Very nice. Look at that, guys. <laughs> that is an impressive bit of work there. And there's no moisture. Yeah, so we got no water in here anywhere. So perfect on the IP65 rating. Uh, this is a gorgeous battery. I've not seen anything like this. Um, the closest I think has come to this would be the Power Eurus. Uh, this was a, a pretty impressive build quality. This one is just like upper echelon stuff here, guys. A huge BMS. It actually says 200 amp. You know, even though on the specs of this battery, it says 150 charge, 150 amp discharge. This bat, this BMS actually says 200 amp. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you know, 200 amp on it. There's a little Bluetooth dongle. It looks a lot like the ones that are used for JBDs. And there's the little LED display board that shines through the top. And then this thing, I don't know, what is this? Some kind of, uh, oh, this is some kind of communications board. Because you can see uh, the ports that are coming through here all wire into it, except for the switch. The switch connects to the BMS itself, but this this board right here, the communications, goes directly to it. I can see that the Bluetooth dongle connects to this board here. The LED board connects to this board. The two COM ports on the top of the case connect to the board. And then this connects to, I think it connects to the BMS right here. Okay, yeah, and so here are the heater wires going down into the heating elements, the heating pads down there. And then I think, I bet this board controls the heating as well. So it looks like there's a relay right there. Maybe that's what controls it. Yeah, everything on this battery looks very much purpose built. There's just no general purpose looking tape or fiber board put together or anything like that. It's it's all molded and purpose built. So looking over some documentation that they sent me on this, it they actually say the cells are Goshen cells. All right, so on the positive, we've got two six gauge silicone 200 Celsius wires. And on the negative, we've got three, it looks like eight gauge silicone wires. I wonder if I can get all this out now. Okay, so we're definitely getting somewhere. Ooh, it's heavy. Oh, okay. Ooh, all right. <laughs> all right, so there we go. Gorgeous. Look at that. So there's your little heating elements on the side of the cells. Uh, the cells have a fixture in place here where they're all, you know, they've got these plastic cell holding brackets like purposely made for this battery. You know, big metal screws that go all the way through to keep it held in place. And it's probably going to be the same thing on the other side. So we've got the other heating pad on this side. Yeah, everything, they, they, this is amazing construction. It's really good. And here's the bottom. And you can see here, these are thick bus bars. So there's, so there's two cells 
in parallel and then the bus bar goes across there and then series with another two cells here and two cells here in parallel series with another two cells here in parallel so it should be uh, 100 amp hour cells each parallel to make 200 amp hours but you can just you can see the thickness of that bus bar and uh, that looks yeah that's uh, I think that's going to be coated copper see if we can scrape it I'm not seeing anything shine through yet but well, maybe aluminum I don't see any I'm not seeing any red shining through so it may very well be aluminum but it's very thick oh yeah I can see where it's welded yeah it's a very thick aluminum bus bar because it appears to be oh, laser welded to the top of the cells there. Yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed with this battery, guys. It's a, it's a real nice thing. All right, I put the cells back in, but I took the screws out on this top plate. So let's see if we can kind of move this up and take a look what's underneath. So I'm guessing these are the sense leads. I was hoping I'd find a I'm looking for thermal sensors I think I might see them yeah found them there we go I found two they were tucked up underneath the BMS so let's try to charge this thing and then freeze them and see if we get low temperature protection okay so we are charging here at 43 amps let's uh, See if we can get this to stop charging. Yep, sure did. There it is. Zero current and the charger stopped. So it said protect, and then now we're in standby. And we're back to charging. Yeah, there we go, guys. Uh, very neat. Thanks to VoltGoal for sending this out for us to test and review. Obviously, this battery is not going to be for everyone. If you want the absolute cheapest battery, this is not it. But if you want a really awesome battery, I think this is it. So it's gonna cost you a little bit more money for this kind of awesomeness. Oh, actually, we can't go yet because I've got to, we gotta try connecting these, the, the empty shell that I have to this one. So let me do that. All right, yeah, so I think if you have multiple batteries you want to uh, connect together, you can do it with these panels right here. Let's try that. Yeah, that's exactly what this does. <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> wow, that is totally awesome. All right, guys, so if you want the coolest batteries, I think these you can't beat. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for the video. I'll leave all kinds of links and stuff down there, and uh, check them out. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you on the next one.